So um, some of the things that I struggle with are the tools that you have and that you use. So what I see artists do, and they show up in the studio all the time, and I've been teaching for 30 years now with their own studio, is they like to take a razor blade, a one-sided razor blade, and they sharpen the pencil. And you know, it has its benefits and it's really cool to do this. And you, you have to sort of push the razor blade in and then turn it so you don't carve on the, or break off the graphite. And you make these long points and then you can just kind of rotate and chisel and make a point with the pencil. Okay, and this is what I see artists do all the time. And I'm telling you, stop. Bob Newhart had a skit on, on TV 30 years ago called Stop It. This lady went to see a counselor, she was having trouble, and his answer for her was stop it, just stop it. And that was his answer. What happens when I have a pencil like this? My brain has an attitude problem that has to be adjusted. Gosh, that was a little early. Has to be adjusted. Look at it this way. Why do you use a pencil? Why do you use graphite pencils? Graphite pencils, for me, when I draw something in, I do a very deliberate, I take my time, it comes out very careful, I execute well. When I switch to charcoal, something happens in my brain. I go a little faster, I go a little more uh, not so careful, and I make a different kind of mark. And then when I paint with a brush and draw it in with a brush, gosh, there are times I leave the hand off the painting. So the tools that I use seem to change my thought process. And what I'm trying to develop in this program is that you're aware of every time you do something, something happens. And it starts right here with the pencils. So let's go with what I love. I love the Faber Castell 9000 series. I believe I've even seen them at 9200, 9300 series. I think it's all the same. But right now I'm seeing the 90, no, 9000 series. Head and heels above everything. Do I own other companies' pencils and, and other things? Sure, I'm just like you. I go to the art store, I buy everything. Insecurity makes that happen. But when I was asked to do a drawing of President Carter, all of a sudden, all those pencils are left on the table and the only thing brought out were these. And let me explain why. So what happens with the pencils, we have a, a ruler that we sell and it basically tells you which pencil does what. So like the four and five and six H make the lighter values, the F and H be the medium and the two B and the three B make the dark. So basically the F is in the middle and this is an F, it's in the middle. And then to the going one direction, the higher the H, the lighter it is. So a six H is lighter than a two H and it's lighter than an H. As I go the other direction toward the Bs, a two B is darker than an H. So we use B as a reference for black. And then three B is darker than a two B and six B and eventually eight B. So the pencils that I use, let's just give you the answer so you calm down, so you don't have to listen to this whole thing, because sometimes you're like me and you just want the facts. I buy a 6H in the 9000 series. I buy an F. I have a 3B, and then I buy the Stadler Mars Lumograph 8B. And I can do almost everything with this range. I don't need the package of 20 pencils. I just need the ones that are gonna make certain values. So this pencil, this H, 6H, makes values one to four, one to five. The F, anywhere from five to 10 or 12. The F is my workhorse. This talk right now is about these three pencils. So let me explain that and what's going on. And to do that though, I have to grab some paper. So here I have some paper. On the sheet, you can see the weave. So the softer the pencil, when I go over this, you see the softer the weave, if I touch very lightly and if I hold the pencil sideways, it rides over the bumps of the paper and the texture and the bumps are now visible. Now you see the weave of this paper. This is a Strathmore 500 series paper. It's my absolute favorite for charcoal. Um, I'm just using it in a drawing demo to show the example. That weave will come forward 
and tell the viewer to look somewhere. Well, that's my problem with the pencils. So when I use these other companies and I take another company's pencil and I, I've been scribble on these and I make different kind of marks with these pencils, it's, it's making a certain weave that attracts attention. But if I take the F pencil from the 9000 series and I go over it, it's gonna press hard enough to smooth out the weave to get rid of the majority of the weave. Now this is a charcoal paper and we're not meant or intended to use, but you see how you don't see the bumps? So let's think about this. If this is a shiny smooth material, does this look like shiny and smooth or does this look like it? So if the pencil's not hard enough, then what happens is the weave of the paper comes through now, there is a solution, and we'll talk about that in a minute, all the different papers that are sold on the market. But, and it doesn't really matter to me, because here's Reeves BFK. It's an incredible paper. I think it's the world's finest uh, drawing paper. You're doing a drawing for a museum. This is the paper you're using. It's 100% cotton. The company's been around for 150 years out of France. But here's that soft pencil on the Reeves, and here's the F pencil. Do you notice the silver color? It's even a different color. It, what it's doing is it's, so if the fibers look like this, if this is an aerial or side view of the fibers, you see these bumps like this, and this is what the paper looks like. And when you take your pencil and you go over it lightly, you're hitting the top of that paper and it's creating that textured weave. You're hitting the tops. What the F pencil is doing, it's pushing so hard, it's flattening out as if you're ironing the paper. So in a drawing, when you want something to recede, if you're looking at me and you're saying, I want the arm to go farther away, I want the nose to go farther away, I want the cheek to go farther away, then I need to remove the texture because the texture comes forward and attracts attention. So as it goes farther away, you're going darker and darker and darker, but you're also removing the texture. Texture is a huge tool in painting. To start to see what it's actually doing in front of your eyes, it's an outstanding way to do this with paint, or I'm sorry, with pencil. Starting with a pencil, controlling texture for what you needed to do. The key to you painting at a high level is learning to control your touch. So why do I like these pencils? So the 6H pencil makes, and oh, I know, this is not a how-to thing, but basically I hold it way at the end. I'm holding your hand at 90 degrees and I'm touching very lightly. And to go darker, it's like an instrument. I'm just gonna get lower and I go darker. And to go darker, I'm gonna go lower. And I get all the way from values one to five with this 6H pencil. Then I touch it very much at the end again. I start very lightly. I go to the F, I press a little harder. I go a little farther and a little harder. I get a little darker. And now as I'm pressing harder, it's starting to iron the paper and removing the texture. As something gets darker, it, it moves in space. It tells you it's moving away from you. So you're helping it by getting rid of the texture. So this pencil, it gets the full range I need. It gets me to 10 or 12 sometimes in the value scale, but it also removes the texture and I'm in control of the texture. Does that mean it's the only pencil I use? No, there's times when I'm painting drawing wool or some other texture like that, and it actually has a weave that I need to have in there. Then I'm gonna take this 3B pencil and I'm gonna make a weave and show the weave. So it's not something I do every time. I'm just aware of it but it's also the tool that gives me a chance to do this. So stop taking a razor blade and sharpening your pencils. I need a point to this pencil. My favorite, we already did a review on my favorite Power Me pencil sharpener. My favorite pencil sharpener is this Power Me because I get a beautiful point every time and I don't have to play with it. We must have bought 20 pencil sharpeners over the years. And this one does a great job with the 
point. If the point's not long enough, it's not going to get in between the bumps in the paper and flatten the paper out for me. I just want more latitude and control with my pencil. A, a graphite pencil is a graphite pencil, but it's not. And that's why I, I'm a big fan of this. Holders, things like this, where the pencil gets too short and put it in there. Okay, but now it weighs 37 pounds. How do I have a light touch and get the lightest values if my pencil sharpener doesn't work? So he can't do this because I don't have a trash can over there, but normally I do. But typically that's where the holder would go, in the trash. It's good for nothing. So don't use it. Um, let me come full circle. When would this be good? When would using the razor blade and making a long artistic mark be good? Well, how about when I want to make these gestural marks and I have a big, long stroke and a fat one and a thin one, and, and, and I'm making these incredibly fun and artistic movement, then this is outstanding. But I've also changed the way I hold the pencil. It, between my palm and my hand here, it's almost sideways. So I can get the whole fatness of my stroke and then I lift and turn. But you see, the lifting and the turning is a touch I developed where the F pencil giving me control of the shading, letting me see what it's doing. All of that stuff is control. In fact, I'm going to drop this and we're going to move on, but I want to share one quick thing. Have you ever had trouble where you're shading and you go back and forth? And you end up with these dark spots right here. Well, the dark spots come from you pressing a certain hardness, hitting the brakes, pressing harder and coming back. Some of the top people in the world that I've seen come through the program, Dylan Scott Pierce, Megan McCall, uh, Catherine Schuber, who draw with a pencil that is just as well as anybody anywhere in the world. A lot of them share this technique. Dylan is the one who showed it to me. He makes a figure eight loop. So he, instead of going back and forth, if you do fly fishing, it's a C loop. So your, your hand goes this way and you don't stop keeping the same pressure and you loop back and you go back and forth like a loop. And what that does, you just do it so close no one can see it. You don't have those dark marks and it's even, but that's a different video. This is just a product. So let me recap. Is there a place for using the razor blade? Yes. Have I ever done it? Not 40 years, but I imagine there are things that you could do this way. Okay. The pencils I choose. Why do I like the 3D pencil from Stadler Moore's 8,000, 9,000 series? I need the pencil to go to black, but I also need it to be able to go to the values 13, 12, and 11. So as I get lighter, I need it to have that ability to get lighter and lighter and lighter. And it does that, it carries the range. If I buy this in a 4B pencil, it goes too dark. I don't have control of my darks. If I buy it in a 2B pencil, it doesn't go dark enough. So I'm buying quality control where it's the same hardness, but it also has to cover a latitude for that pencil. So without a doubt, these are my favorite. I did throw in the Stadler Mars 8B. Why? Because nothing goes this dark. I mean, it is darker than anything on the planet. But in this area right here, it has a different shine to it. It's almost waxy. So quite often I'll take the 3B and go over it and hide some of it, giving it a shine, leaving just a little of the waxy black. So I can do everything I need with these four pencils. It's for me to develop a touch so I can control the brush one day. But it's also developing your eye and getting you to slow down and take the time you need to do this correctly. Give yourself a chance to succeed. That's all I'm asking for. Just one step at a time and the tool matters. Okay, that's about this.